Welcome, Mr. Gross. How does it feel to be back on campus? Christy, it feels great. Um, my career has taken me uh, all over the world, and I don't get back here very often, but uh, it's, it's really good to be back. Oh, wow. So you travel all over the place then, right? I, I do. That's I do. great. So they say that leaders are born, not made. Do you agree with this statement? You know, I think it's a little bit of both, really. Um, I, I do think that on the maid side, the, the mentoring that you get, the coaching you get during your career, um, you, you know, that, that really enhances your leadership skills. Mm -hmm. but, but I do think that there's qualities and genes that uh, you're born with. Some people just have it then, right? Yes. <laughs> so some leaders build consent and others seek consensus. Which one are you? I try to be as collaborative as possible, um, gathering information, um, weighing alternatives, evaluating the pros and cons of each alternative it is, is very important. Um, as you can imagine, Christy, sometimes time does not allow for, um, you know, to be fully collaborative and yeah. sometimes you have to make quick decisions. Yeah, oh my God, definitely. So leaders are hired for their skills and fired for their style. What skills do you think good leaders must have and which styles ensure success? Well, what quickly comes to mind are, I, I think a leader has to be transparent, has to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, has to be fair. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, being a dictator, uh, command and control, micromanaging at the top, I, I just don't think that works in today's business environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why are some executives better equipped to get at the heart of important issues and effectively anticipate and manage the challenges that arise? Well, I, I think focus. Um, the leaders that I have been around that have been most successful have been the ones who really think proactively. They anticipate what's going to come up. Uh, they plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. and, and not very often or, or never are they um, really surprised and are forced to be in a reactive mode. Mm. Okay. So how can we produce strategic, thoughtful, and brilliant leaders that will guide us into the 21st century? Well, I think it starts with education. Oh. Um, obviously, you have to have that baseline of, uh, of knowledge. And then, you know, once people graduate, the learning doesn't stop. Yeah, it you keeps have going. To, you have to continuously improve. You have to continue to change and grow, uh, adapt to the situations. And earlier I mentioned mentoring and coaching and counseling. I, I think my best advice for young professionals uh, who are embarking on the workforce, uh, you know, seek out proactively uh, mentors and leaders um, who you want to emulate and, and learn as much as you can from them. Okay, so it's not just experience, it's finding people and what they do and everything. That, that, that's absolutely critical. Okay. So what changes, if any, do you think is needed for academic programs in business or other areas? Well, that's a good question. I, I, I'm the firm I work for, a um, big global firm. We hire business students every year. I see them come from many different backgrounds, cultures. Uh, schools, mm -hmm. uh, you know, varying schools. Um, you know, speech, communications, business writing, um, I, I think those are skills that I underestimated when I was in school. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that focus on those, um, you, you know, would be key to someone's success. Yeah. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, trying to be proactive and anticipate change and making sure with all the technological changes yeah. and the globalization of business, um, you know, make sure you stay ahead of the curve on yeah, those things. Yeah, you have to be ready for everything, right? You do. <laughs> so what is the most critical leadership issue we face today? Well, overall, I think it's probably ethics, ethics. and morals and, and values. Um, you know, a lot of the problems in the, in the business world today, and I, I'm not just talking here in the U.S., but globally, are, um, you know, people looking out for themselves yeah. and their best interests at the expense of what's best for the organization and that type of thing. And, you know, recent past, 
is filled with stories of unethical behavior. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing the right thing all the time, I, I think, is critically important. Yeah, that's definitely a big part. Yeah. Okay, so what are the three most pivotal moments in your career that you either learned from and or got you where you are today? Well, I think um, in, in no particular order, Christy, mm -hmm. um, one of them has to be, I was given the opportunity uh, about one third through my career to go to our firm's national office. Uh, I'm a CPA, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, I got to work very closely with the firm's strategy. I got to work very closely with the Securities and Exchange Commission the Financial Accounting Standards Board, that, that was a tremendous experience. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I think another one is I have done a foreign secondment. I lived and worked in Russia for five years. Oh, cool. um, obviously, that opens your eyes to emerging markets, yeah. different cultures, and, and the challenges there. And I think maybe third, um, is I have had the opportunity in our firm to work on our big global public clients. Um, that has given me a much broader global perspective of the business world uh, to work on those clients, travel the world, um, obviously much broader than my, my upbringing in <laughs> northeastern Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay, so then what's your secret to success? Well, I don't know if it's a secret, but, but mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of commonalities with successful people. And I, I think it starts with, with a strong work ethic and, and very hard focused work. Um, you know, people who start their careers and eventually succeed, they might have been on, you know, a high learning curve and a, a high growth path. But that does not mean that everything was easy throughout mm -hmm. the years. And there are peaks and valleys. Um, my suggestion, my recommendation to young students would be, you know, try to, um, you know, even out the peaks and valleys. Uh, don't make the peaks too high. Don't make the valleys too low yeah. or you won't be able to get out of one. Mm -hmm. and, and stay focused on the ultimate objective, that being, you know, the, the high goals you set and, yeah. and working towards those. So it's all about balance then? Balance, <laughs> balance is important and um, I mentioned work ethic, but yeah. perseverance when things don't go your way is key because um, if you don't handle the downtimes well, um, some of those valleys can get deep and, and you won't be able to get out of them. Yeah. So persevere and, and stay focused. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your expertise. I think you've given us some valuable information when we enter the business world. Thank okay. you so much. Christy, thank you. I enjoyed it.